Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Fight Focus. And for today's video, we will be covering some of the most creative knockouts in MMA history. Also, shout out to Swagonometry for giving us the video recommendation. Who doesn't love a good knockout? Just kidding, that shouldn't even be a question. We've seen a lot of fighters over the years with the extraordinary levels of talent showing their skills in an effort to render another man unconscious. The results are usually pleasing and terrific for the crowd, but desperation for the losing end. The whole fight turns into a mere 3 to 5 second scenario, and if you glimpse that particular knockout punch landing directly on the face, you won't regret missing the whole fight in return. Naturally, some fighters are better than others at doing this. Let's take a look at some of them. First up, Travis Brown vs Stefan Struve. Superman punches are a bit of an enigma in the fighter's repertoire. Most fighters might have it in their move set somewhere, but never really on it that much, and use it in their fights even less simply because of what's needed for execution, as well as the move often being easy to avoid for the opponent. Unless you're Stefan Struve, who walked right into one. At UFC 130, Travis Brown landed one of the cleanest straight shots to the face you're likely to see, absolutely planting one right in the middle of the melon. What makes it so special is the fact they're heavyweights. The big boys aren't always known for their speed and agility in the cage, but Brown came out of nowhere. In a split second, he spotted Struve's forward movement, hands open, and then before he could even blink, he leaped up with the left foot and absolutely dropped them. Such speed and timing is usually reserved for the lighter divisions, but this is all class from often underrated Brown, and a name listed in our list. Next up, on to Jorge Masvidal vs Ben Askren. Jorge Masvidal's draw-dropping KO of Ben Askren has been officially clocked at 5 seconds, but he was out in 2. The time it took for his knee to become best friends with Askren's face. Jumping knees happen, often from the clinch as do running knees, but never was there a knockout like this, ever before. Over before you knew it had started. Even John Anik was only halfway through the opening sponsorship plug when Joe Rogan interrupted to belt out his trademark yell. Fight clock is brought to you by Mago. Oh! There was just as much skill involved as there was luck. Masvidal did practice sprinting straight at his opponent with a knee, but if Askren didn't duck into it and move his arms out for takedown, it might have ended very poorly for the Florida native. There was a lot of power, timing, and skill involved, with the rushing your opponent's style of opening to a fight often too big a risk for a fighter in the opening seconds. And finishing inside 10 seconds of any kind is hard to come by. A flying knee knockout isn't that common either. Putting them both together is about as unique as it gets. Who's up next? Next we have Edson Barbosa vs Terry Adam. Edson Barbosa is a serious legend of kicking. He loves to kick. He loves to finish with kicks. He would throw those legs around you all day if you let him. We're talking about a guy who had finished fights via head kick, body kicks, and leg kicks three times. That's right, he pummeled and destroyed a fighter's legs so badly that they had to give up and take the TKO loss on three separate occasions. You get the point. His best, however, was reserved for poor Tommy Adam. After going low with the leg kick, Barbosa took a couple of steps back, watched Adam's head drop his hands, then produced one of the cleanest and creative head kicks in MMA history, sinking his heel into the jaw for the first wheel kick finish the UFC has ever seen. It was as beautiful as it was destructive. Adam dropped to the floor, was made better by Rogan's commentary timing. Fighters like JDS and Vitor Belfort had utilized the spinning wheel kick since, but nothing like the day Edson Barbosa dropped jaws in the cage and in the crowd. This is probably one of the most cleanest kicks you've ever seen. Up next, Shoney Carter vs Matt Serra. Coming to the thriller, Shoney Carter vs Matt Serra. UFC 31 was a strange card in hindsight. The show was headlined by an already aged Randy Couture in his first heavyweight title defense against journeyman Pedro Rizzo and what would be his second of three unsuccessful attempts to take the belt. Pat Militech's run with the welterweight title came to the end thanks to Carlos Newton, who would lose the championship in his next fight anyway. Chuck Liddell picked up a knockout win. Even a young BJ Penn was on the card, making his MMA debut in the prelims. And amongst all that, sitting four fights down for the top of the card and still years away from a much nicer career highlight of his, and one of the all-time greatest single punches the company has ever seen. Just the sound of the impact alone is enough, but the vision of Sarah's unsuspecting face meeting Carter's back fist going a thousand miles an hour was one of the company's earlier genuine highlight reel knockouts. Next up, Lyoto Machida vs Randy Couture. This came out of absolutely nowhere. Not quite the jaw dropping highlight that legend Randy Couture was hoping for or deserved to the end of his career on, but when he came across Brazilian magician Lyoto Machida at UFC 129, few could have expected to see such a moment of brilliance in the cage. Machida's unique style was on full display here, slightly adjusting the more traditional front kick into the, that of the crane kick, most famously known by the Karate Kid film in 1984, and it paid off. Couture barely had time to react to Machida's subtle skip and hop off the left foot before the right came up and straight through the gate, dropping the former champion instantly. The natural was incredibly pushing 48 years of age, and expectations weren't high for this fight, despite coming off the back of three straight wins. Machida would utilize the front kick again seven years later against Vitor Belfort, who himself had already been dropped by the same move from Anderson Silva in his career. None of them really compares to Machida's first though. 
Next up, we got Dong Hyung Kim vs John Hathaway. The sound and impact is worth the price of admission alone on this one. The point of the elbow is one of the most devastating parts of the human body when used as a weapon. Even impact on the elbow can be razor blades causing crazy cuts and gashes to happen on the forehead. We've seen this so many times in the UFC and MMA. The pointed force of impact and hardness of the bone is one of the main reasons the controversial 12 to 6 elbow is a legal move in the UFC. The spinning elbow however is still wide open for use and on this occasion Korean veteran Dong Hyun Kim uses it to full effect. A lot like the spinning back fist mentioned earlier, the elbow takes an outstanding bit of timing and guesswork to pick the opponent's movement that will open them up to the shot coming through. Luckily for John Hathaway, if he can be called lucky, the elbow caught his cheek and upper jaw instead of the nose, which would have demolished his face and easily done permanent damage to the beak. In a sad twist, this knockout loss from 2014 was Hathaway's last fight in MMA despite him being only 27 years old at the time, having suffered ongoing health issues since I haven't allowed him to get back into the cage. Another time we've seen the 12-6 elbow was John Jones, who actually lost the fight due to this illegal move. Next, we're here to see Matt Hughes versus Carlos Newton. Carlos Newton and Matt Hughes produced one of the most confusing, controversial, and one of the nastiest slam finishes in UFC history. Newton ended a three-year reign at Pat Militic atop the welterweight division at UFC 31. Unfortunately for him, his lawyer wouldn't last long. In the second round, Hughes was caught in the hold but fought his way to his feet, lifting Newton up and against the cage to release some of the pressure but to no avail eventually passing out where he stood. The problem with the end result came after Hughes was unconscious, dropping Newton headfirst into the mat from quite a height. Newton was knocked out cold on impact. Referee John McCarthy simply didn't see Hughes had already passed out, thinking he slammed Newton down on purpose. When they both hit the floor, McCarthy saw Newton out like a light. He called the fight off in Hughes' favor. In all the chaos, Hughes could be heard asking McCarthy what happened and telling his corner after the fight that I was out. So he did admit that he was out though. Next we have Nico Price versus James Vick. A contender for knockout of the year in 2019, Nico Price's astonishing KO on James Vick was the second upkick finish in UFC history. Vick's fourth loss on the trot, three of them being knockouts, came in incredibly unexpected fashion less than two minutes into the first round. With Price on his back, Vick looked to jostle for a better position out of the full guard by standing up onto his feet. First mistake. He then left Price's right leg completely free when he leaned down towards his opponent looking to land some strikes. Second and last mistake, Price threw his heels straight into the jaw of Vic, turning the lights off in an instant as he flopped to the floor. Some in the arena and watching on TV even said they could hear the sound of Vic's jaw cracking on impact. Dude, imagine hearing somebody's jaw crack. Coming to Gary Goodrich versus Paul Herrera. Maybe not the flashiest nor the most exciting, but Gary Goodrich knocking out Paul Herrera at UFC 8 has to go down as one of the most unique and abstruse finishes of all time. Just 13 seconds is all it took, and what was the MMA debut of both fighters? In the first round of the UFC 8 tournament, wrestler Herrera and Trinidadian Canadian Kok Sulwan artist Goodrich looked to be one of the more even contests on the card, pitting two mat based fighters together. Herrera shot for the leg, Goodrich dropped onto, then rolled him all within a few seconds, locking both his arms up across his legs and chest. Goodrich had the opening he was after, but not the finish anyone was expecting. Instead of cranking on a possible armbar, Goodrich released right arm and planted on an elbow right side of Herrera's head, then another one, and another one, and another one, and four more before referee John McCarthy could call it and break them apart. One look at the footage you can see that Herrera is out, after, is out after just one strike. To get a knockout finish in that position is something astounding in itself. In the speed and the brutality of eight elbows in barely three seconds, and you have the most unique knockout in UFC history. And now moving toward one of the most creative knockouts to ever be witnessed in the world of MMA is brought to you by Anthony Showtime Pettis. Anthony was set to fight Benson Henderson at WEC 53 in Phoenix, Arizona. This was Benson's title defense for the lightweight division. During this fight, Anthony did one of the craziest knockouts to ever be seen before. Check it out. Even though it knocked Benson Henderson down on his butt, it still did not stop the fight. The fight ended up with Anthony winning via unanimous decision causing him to dethrone Benson and receive the belt for the lightweight division. Some argue that this might be the greatest knockout in MMA history. Just the creativity of running off the cage to kick your opponent, that's a video game move. Alright MMA fans, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, make sure to hit the notification bell, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Also, don't forget to comment below what video you want to see next.